YouTubers and welcome to a new video of arepas for dinner. So in today's video I bring you a video that has been highly requested that is how is it like to date a Czech man? What are the characteristics of Czech guys and how it is to be in a relationship with a Czech man? So as you might know if you follow me here on YouTube and on my social media that I'm gonna leave somewhere here I am married to a Czech man. My husband is from Prague, from the Czech Republic, even though we didn't meet here, we meet in Valencia, Spain, and he, I wouldn't consider him the average Czech, but he does have a lot of traits from the Czech man, of course. But I think after living two and a half years here in the Czech Republic and having a lot of Czech friends who are boys, as well as a Czech father-in-law, my husband and everything, I think I've grasped a general idea of what is like to date a Czech man or like what defines a Czech man and do you really want to get into that? To answer those questions you have to watch this video until the end. So that's it, let's start with the video. They get in underwear the minute they get home. That was so weird for me but Czech culture is that's pretty normal. People tend to take their shoes off in the door, but they also tend to be in underwear a lot around the house. They drink lots. And this is true, yet this, I don't believe you can change it. Tech people in general, men and women drink a lot, but especially men, they do drink shots a lot. They do drink beer a lot and they sometimes overdo it, but it is their culture. They have been doing that for generations and generations so if you don't like people drinking around you you might not be prepared for dating a tech man but remember this is a generalization i know there's some tech men around there that they do not drink at all but i'm just being general here they are outdoorsy they like going out cycling camping hiking they are not meant to be kept at home. Czech boys really love going out and doing activities, so be prepared. This is a generalization again, but I've discovered that they like living in the city even though they're so outdoorsy and everything. You are gonna encounter a lot of Czech men that, that do love living in the countryside and that they live happily in the skirt of the city in houses, but you're also gonna encounter that a lot of them don't have the need of having that big house with a space and everything and they really enjoy living in the small apartments inside the city. The gender roles are quite strong here, meaning she cooks and takes care of the kids and irons and does all that and he works and provides. Nowadays, of course, this is shifting, but in the Czech culture, our generation, meaning millennials, might be the first generation that is actually changing towards gender equality. So don't expect your man to be super plumbed to do the dishes or iron for everybody or put the laundry. You might encounter some that are like that, but in the general, they are not like that. And if you have kids, they are probably going to be much more your responsibility than his. Lots of only boys activities and this one was very hard for me because in my culture pretty much boys don't go out without girls. You go to the same trips and once you're there they separate, the guys get and go fishing and do whatever and the girls stay doing something else somewhere else. But they do go together. In the Czech Republic and Czech boys tend to do that a lot. They go in a lot of trips, canoe trips, ski trips, um, even drinking out with friends, going to bars, pubs and clubs without the girlfriends and the girls. So take that in consideration. And then again, I'm not talking about directly my marriage and my relationship with my husband, just generalizing how Czech men are. Hangovers are a thing. And this one can relate to the second one that I said about the drinking, but yes, maybe in some cultures having a hangover is not socially accepted meaning people fake when they have a hangover and they pretend to be normal here no so you if you're dating a tech man you might encounter that the day that he's hungover he expects you to treat him like he has the flu in other words cook him soup lower the volume of the tv if there's kids in the home just take them out so they don't make mess so that was quite different as well 
they know how to cook and they enjoy it. I'm not talking about absolutely every tech man that you're gonna meet, but there is a general rule that tech men do know how to cook and they do enjoy it. They are not gonna be the ones cooking at home on the daily basis because of the gender roles that I said, but they know how to do it and they can help you prepare delicious dishes when you are entertaining or when you are attending to somebody else's cottage or party. They are more comfortable with fellow Czechs than with expats. And I've seen that girls tend to merge much better with the expat community and with international people than the men. The men, when they're dating an expat girl, they might actually suck her into the Czech group more than actually inv getting involved with the international group. Lots of dark humor. Be prepared for that because there's gonna be a lot of jokes and dark humor. So be prepared. If you cannot handle your dark humor, you might not be able to handle a tech man. They tend to be handy. And if they're not handy, they know somebody who's handy who can do it for free. Meaning, if something breaks in the house, they're not gonna call a handyman, they're gonna repair it themselves or they are gonna bring a friend to help them repair it. And that counts for installing a kitchen, painting a room, repairing a TV or a toaster oven. In general, they're very handy. And this one is curious, they're also handy with plants. Tech men as well as tech women, but for me it's curious that tech men are interested in gardening. They like planting their tomatoes, planting their chili peppers in their balconies and that's like an entire thing. So it's very interesting to see men so involved with gardening. They do not watch sports as other nations. Meaning if you go to Spain, I think it was Thursdays, you couldn't do anything because there was like always some football match that will prevent everybody from doing anything besides watching the football match. You don't really have that here. They only care about the Olympics, but not enough to stop going out because of the Olympics. And they do care about hockey, but then again, not enough to stop doing something because there's a hockey match. So that was quite different from America that football, American football or soccer, um, you know, basketball, all those sports can like paralyze the men and the only thing they want to do is watch them. That really doesn't happen here in the Czech Republic. Fashion is not a thing. So when you think about Europeans in general, people think about Spanish boys, very well dressed, Italian boys, very well dressed, French boys, very well dressed. Well, Czech boys, no. So fashion hasn't been that um, strong here in the Czech Republic, but little, little by little people have been getting more and more into fashion, but especially girls, because, well, we're in general more into fashion than boys. So if you see a guy very, very well dressed in the streets of Prague, there's probably two reasons why he's very well dressed, gay or taken. Almost all of them know how to ski or snowboard. So be ready for that. You are going to be invited to the ski trips. And if you don't know how to ski, well, in my case, I've seen them to be very patient and they do take the time to teach you. Expect him to invite you to more things compared to other Europeans. So here in the Czech Republic, it still works a little bit like America. Don't think that they're going to buy everything for you. But yes, they're gonna invite you to dinner or pay the movies when you are on a date. Probably younger generations are not doing that that much anymore, but we are millennials, so I'm talking from the millennial perspective, not gener generation Z or whatever is the next one. They love gifting flowers, so you can expect a lot of flowers. Mother's Day, flowers, um, if you're a mother. St. Valentine, flowers. Woman's Day, flowers. Birthdays, flowers. Name Day, flowers. So Czech men really like giving flowers. They even give them to their friends when they get invited to a house, when they get invited to a party uh, as a birthday present. So that was quite curious, to be honest. They do not know how to dance, yet they enjoy it. So for me, it was quite interesting that once the lights are dim and the shots had been poured, actually Czech men tend to go to the dance floor and make some super awkward moves and they really enjoy doing that and I'm really happy they do because then if you know how to dance and they don't, you can at least dance around them, if you know what I mean. When dating, they don't really have a clue. 
meaning they don't follow the dating rules of I pick you up in your house and I knock on the door and I meet your mom and I take you out. All those things are like not that normal here. People don't make life that often in the house, at home. So it's much more likely that when you start liking them and you start dating, they start by saying, let's meet here, let's go there, I'll see you there type of thing. Therefore, there are not many double dates. I don't know how much they do date nights in real life because we do do we do day nights, but I think that's not a norm here. So since you don't do date nights per se with your significant other, then that doesn't really call for double dates, which is an activity that I really enjoy and I haven't had the opportunity to explore it as much as I wish. By the way, if you don't know what a double date is, it just means that two friends who are boys and two friends who are girls who are dating, um, go together to a restaurant or to the movies and that's it. Expect to have separate groups of friends. This one might come to a shock. I know it was a shock to me 100% that men and women tend to keep their friends apart. Maybe once they've been married for many years, they have finally a one group, but not even. I honestly still see even my parents-in-law to have different friends. Therefore, when you invite a guy to your house, for example, Jan has a lot of friends who are boys. And when he invites the boys, the wives don't come. So I have to do the effort and go directly and invite the wives because for me, it's logical. Once you are married or you are in a serious relationship, I expect your girlfriend or your wife to always come. You're always a plus one immediately for me, not in this culture because she is expected to go to her friend's things and he's expected to go to his friend's things and only when both are like explicitly invited is when both shall attend. They are not as fighty and jealous as other cultures. So tech men, I think they honestly trust a lot their woman and if they wouldn't, they would separate. So in general, they do not do jealous scenes. They, they don't get into fights because some men look at my woman and now I want to fight him. That really, I've never seen that happen here. And it's, uh, it's curious because tech men, especially when they're younger, not millennials anymore, but maybe Generation Z, they, um, they fight a lot. They like fighting. They go to bars to fight. It's super stupid, but they do, they do it. But it's never because of the girls, meaning it's never jealousy related. They move together quite fast. I think in Western cultures, we are seeing more and more the jokes about the girl trying to move in with him and he kind of panicking about it. And that's not really the thing here. I've seen the guys trying to move in together so soon with their new girlfriends. And I'm talking about the normal time is a month. Like one month after dating, they're already moving together. And I have friends that moved even before the month which for me is insane because, you know, in my culture, we, I know some people live together, but as a general rule, we don't even live together with the boyfriends before getting married. So imagine the comparison in between those two. Therefore, they're more steady in relationships. So if you're going to move with somebody after a month of dating, that prevents you really to break up with that person after two months and move in with the second one because it's just so complicated. So in general, I've seen Czech people to be much more steady in their relationships. They have very long-term relationships and they don't tend to have many boyfriends and girlfriends in, since the first one until they get married kind of thing. This brings me to the next topic that is there's not many womanizers. And if they are, you're never going to know they are because they do not bring their conquers to your events, parties, reunions, drinking beer. So in my culture, if you have a guy who's always dating a new girl because he's never serious, you're going to meet all his three million different girlfriends that he gets in the course of a year. In the Czech Republic, no. You probably are not going to meet any of the girls that he's hanging with. So it's very hard to spot a womanizer here, to be honest. They do like to get married and have kids, and that's quite shocking, especially for Europeans, because as you might know, Europeans, especially when you think about France or Spain, they, uh, they, 
they don't really get married and have kids that soon. They really, really wait for it. And some of them don't even get married. Well, in the Czech Republic, getting married is still a goal for both men and women. Having a beautiful big wedding is still a goal for men and women, which is very pretty and I'm very happy for that. They also like having kids. So if you are around 30 years old and you are planning to date a Czech guy, they might all be married by now. No, I'm kidding. But a lot of them are already in the way of getting married. And by 30, a lot of them already have kids, which is very normal for my culture in Venezuela. And it's very normal compared to the American culture, but it's very different from the rest of Europe. Once they get married, and this one was quite odd as well for me, they like the typical thing, you know, they get married, they want the kids immediately after getting married and they want to buy a house immediately after getting married. And by buy a house, I mean buy a tiny apartment of 50 square meters because nobody has money to buy anything right now here. But yeah, what I mean is that even though the hard circumstances that are happening with the real estate market right now in the Czech Republic, you should check that video out. I'm going to leave it at the end of this video. Very cool. Czech men still believe in those steps that you have to make. Meet a woman, live with her, marry her, have kids and buy the house, which is very traditional. Good for them, I guess. And the last one that I have in the list is they're not big family men. And what that means is one, they don't want to have many kids. Majority of them uh, grew up maybe with, with one or two brothers tops. So that's what they're looking for. Um, so if you want to have like 10 kids, you're probably going to scare them all away. <laughs> and also they are not as familiar as you might think of Italian, Spanish, Latin Americans. Um, so the relationship with their parents is, is good, but that doesn't mean that they go together every Sunday to have Sunday lunch at their parents or that they travel together or something like that. So if you start dating a tech guy and he doesn't introduce you to his parents, that's fine. I mean, you might know them just like randomly one day because they stopped by the apartment where you're already living with him before he introduced you because, well, that's how um, family relationships more or less work here. And um, that was it, guys. I hope you all, you girls especially, I mean, I hope the guys watch it to see if it was accurate and I hope the girls watch it if you want to get a check. Man, I could do the same about Czech girls, but to be honest, I do not have enough Czech girlfriends to be able to put a list. I do have a few and I do appreciate them, but not enough for me to put all this together for the girls. Maybe in a couple of years, I'll make one for the girl side of the situation. Other than that, that said, I'll see you next Tuesday with a new video. It's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a birthday vlog from Jan's birthday that is on Saturday. And after that, we might do the 10 things that I still don't get used to from the Czech Republic. So that was it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you like my content. This is more or less what I post all the time. Also, follow me on social media, on Instagram. I post there everything I eat, everything I do. I'm just an Instagrammer. People know every time where I am, what am I doing, because I share it. That's me. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, okay? Bye.